for a period of time, I love eating Chipotle, and I found one of the store that always give me a huge size of the burrito. So I go to that specific store all the time. This presentation of positive stimulus actually increased my behavior of going to that store. At home, we have a lower desk, and my babies always hit his head when he tries to walk through. This type of negative stimulus decreased his behavior of going through that desk. These are examples of how we learn from the consequences, and that's today's topic, operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is proposed by B.F. Skinner, extended on Pavlov's classic conditioning, based on Thondek's law of effect which suggests that behavior is influenced by the consequences, which are the stimulus. Presenting or removing different stimulus can change our behavior. This perspective is different than the need-based perspective of motivation, because Skinner argued that our inner needs is not important. Our behaviors are simply driven by the consequences. There are two sets of situations we have to be aware of. One is reinforcement or punishment, which is whether we want to increase or decrease the behavior. The other one is presenting or removing stimulus. In this grid, you can see if we would like to increase certain behavior, we can either present positive stimulus or remove negative stimulus. If we would like to decrease certain behavior, we can either present negative stimulus or remove positive stimulus. At the workplace, we can apply this learning-based perspective in shaping employees' behaviors. For instance, if we would like employees to sell certain protection plans or credit cards, we can either introduce positive stimulus or remove negative stimulus. At Best Buy, employers encourage employees to sell protection plans for all of their electronics. They can provide a bonus if the employees sell a certain amount of the protection plans. So that's an example of presenting a positive stimulus to increase the selling behavior. At Home Depot, you might have seen by the cashier, there is a sign saying, if the cashier forgot to mention the credit card, they'll treat you a soft drink. So to provide paying for a soft drink, the cashier has to learn to mention the credit card more times. So this is an example of removing negative stimulus to increase certain behavior. To decrease harassment behavior at the workplace, we can mandate extra sensitivity trainings. This is an example of decrease certain behavior by introducing the negative stimulus. We also want to reduce the unsafe behavior. To decrease the unsafe behavior of operating a forklift at a warehouse, employers can remove certain bonus if employees commit more than three times of unsafe behavior that doesn't meet the safety uh, standards. That is an example of decrease the behavior by removing the positive stimulus. There are different reinforcement schedules, which refers to that the presentation of the stimulus for certain behavior varies. It can be continuous or intermittent. For instance, your kid get an ice cream every time he gets a haircut, or a waitress get good tips every time the customer is satisfied. That's an example of continuous reinforcement. However, at a corporate level, it's very difficult to use the continuous reinforcement or punishment all the time. They are more likely to use the intermittent schedules. Intermittent schedules means the stimulus is on occasional or unpredicted basis. It works better on encouraging continuous efforts. For instance, in a video game like Doom, you have to pass several challenges to be able to get a health pack, access a new map. So to achieve that, you have to commit continuous effort. Following up are different intermediate schedules at the workplace. Fixed, fixed interval schedules provide stimulus at a fixed set of time. For instance, many Chinese companies provide one month extra pay uh, before the Chinese New Year every year. Or at a coffee shop, employers typically provide free coffee beans every paycheck, every two weeks. These are great tools for attracting employees. However, it doesn't work very well in shaping new behavior.
figures. Fixed ratio schedules refers that you get a stimulus when your action reach certain times. For a fixed ratio punishment schedule, many employers have termination policies. If you conduct four times of disciplinary actions, you'll be terminated. For an example, Lyft used to have a signing bonus. If you have your first 75 rides, you will get a $500 signing bonus. Fixed ratio schedule normally works well in shaping your behavior, but it's also easy to burn out. Next one is variable interval schedules. This refers to getting a stimulus by various set of time. So at a lot of workplace, promotion is an example. You don't know how many years you have to work in this position to get promoted. Another example is when the managers walk through the assembly lines to supervise. They can work at various times. This type of stimulus works well in shaping new behaviors. One of the examples I want to mention is in a community, there's huge theft issues, but the securities go to the wrong five, six times a day. So they don't know why and how to solve the problem. Later, someone proposed to change the fixed interval schedule into the variable interval schedule, which means the security go out for runs at a random time instead of a fixed time. And that solved the problem right away. That's very efficient and easy and it doesn't cost anything. The last one is variable ratio schedule. This is the most flexible and it's situational based. For example, a surprise award or unexpected bonus works the best to shape the new behavior and maintain the behaviors. Large corporations tend to use operant conditioning to train employees' behavior. For instance, Amazon is trying to use this mini social games to gamify the workplace. They use the digital awards to increase the productivity behaviors. It works even if separate from the performance measurement. There are mixed responses. Some employees argue that it brings excitement. It actually helps them with the boredom for long shifts. Others argue that it actually brings unsafe behaviors because these mini games promote to work quicker. I would also like to note, besides reinforcement and punishment, there's also neutral operants, which is the environmental stimulus that doesn't increase or decrease the behavior. There's also extinction of the behaviors. So if you have been trying to reinforce certain behaviors, and when you remove the reinforcement, the behavior can disappear. Among the four intermittent schedules, the various ratio schedule is the most resistant to extinction of the behaviors. Hope you enjoy this topic and see you next time.